Well, you know, I, I think um, a lot of people are still struggling to understand what Bitcoin mining is. And the concept of digital property or digital money or digital energy is such a paradigm shift that uh, a lot of people have a hard time getting their hands around it. Uh, I think that um, the real, the critical idea to understand, of course, is that we have a way to use energy and technology to create digital property. And uh, that's proof of work mining. Uh, and then once you understand that, then everything else follows. Uh, the letter um, letter is based on the premise, the, the lack of understanding what digital property is. And if you don't understand that you need to use energy and semiconductor technology to create digital property, then everything else doesn't follow. Um, I, I think that we've seen uh, a lot of this FUD regurgitated over and over again. You know, comments like, oh, it takes a lot of energy to process a transaction. These are just, they're just uh, misperceptions, right? Because Bitcoin doesn't use energy to process transactions. It uses energy to secure the network and to create digital property. But, um, you know, I've said, if you don't spend 10 hours, you, you know, you probably don't even understand what it is. And if you haven't spent 100 hours, you don't decently appreciate it. So most of the people in positions of power are being forced to have an opinion, but they don't have the time uh, to study the underlying technology. And so they, they don't always pick up on the technical nuances, the ethical nuances and the legal nuances that cause the Bitcoin community to embrace proof of work. I think the most important thing to be said is that Bitcoin mining is the cleanest, most efficient, most valuable use of energy in the world. Full stop. When people stop and they think about how we use energy, either any kind of energy, whether it's uh, sustainable energy or fossil fuel energy, you know, you realize you need it in medicine and retail and hotels and you need it in planes and trains and automobiles and banking and you need it in schools and it's used in defense. It's used in everything of any consequence in the civilization. And in every place the energy flows, it's dirtier than Bitcoin mining. <laughs> when it flows into Bitcoin mining, as Darren said, it just flows into a data center and what you're getting is security for hundreds of billions of dollars of assets. In essence, you're just buying security for the network and integrity such that you can create a digital asset that that is uh, censorship proof, nation state attack resistant, corporate attack resistant. And another way to say that is you've created tangible digital property that you could expect uh, to exist in a, with integrity over the course of hundreds of years. So that's the part that's just not understood, and everything that follows in the letter is, of course, just wrong, right? <laughs> right? The use of energy for transactions, the you know, the potential to generate any kind of waste, all of these things are just silly assertions. Because if you understand that uh, Bitcoin mining is used to create digital property that you can move at the speed of light on a computer in cyberspace. Right. Once you understand that, then then uh, everything else kind of falls into place. And and uh, if you're an environmentalist, then, of course, every other thing in the universe is worse for the environment than to create a block of digital energy. Everything. Right. So so curtailing the creation of digital energy or digital property via Bitcoin mining is pretty much attacking the cleanest, most efficient, you know, most uh, valuable use of energy in the world. I think that uh, that a number of politicians have their own opinions on this, and they'll speak for themselves in in uh, in short order uh, with their own communications. So I would expect that something uh, will actually be delivered to the EPA from Congress or the Senate. That's good to hear, Darren. Going to you. When it comes to Bitcoin and the political movement, you both know that I'm pretty active in pushing this forward in the United States. But do you think that as an industry, we are pushing hard enough? Do we need to push even harder? Do we need to be more active? Or do you feel like where we're at right now is a good place? Since I've been involved uh, for the last decade, I, this is the, the largest groundswell of attention 
and activism in in support of proof of work in Bitcoin that's ever taken place. So we're on a, the trajectory is positive. The outcomes are positive. The involvement with the community is positive. We see institutional uh, support. We see government support. We see the the SEC support. Uh, it's, it would be really difficult to have predicted this five or six years ago that that the institutions, the government, the the White House administration would put out an executive order uh, talking about how important digital assets are for the future of technological advancement in America. Uh, and so we're going in the right direction. And all of it is going to be predicated on continuing to educate people as to the facts about this network, what it is what we're doing, what a miner is, what the network does. And and really to Michael Saylor's point, if you don't personally spend, he says a hundred hours, I think it's a thousand hours. I think you have to spend a thousand hours on this network, learning it, digesting how complicated it is. If you spend two hours on this and you make a statement regarding this network, you're gonna look foolish. You're gonna look completely foolish. And if you have a staff, and they tell you to say something and somebody else told them to tell you to say it and nobody did any independent research on it, you're going to look foolish. You have to do the research on this network. It's, it is a massively complicated system. And because at the base root of it, we have an accounting technology that's immutable. So this is the first record of any type of transaction in human history that can never be altered. This accounting functionality changes every single system in the world and if you think that you're going to understand that in a in you know a 30 minute seminar you're wrong and so it's really important and and as sailor says and we all say this is the most important innovation technologically for finance for economics and accounting that's ever taken place in the world it's very important for you to do your homework before you go put forth letters uh, you're, you know, especially representatives that represent citizens that elected them to office. Uh, those citizens want you to be uh, knowledgeable about this space. A majority, somewhere, somewhere 20 plus percent of Americans own some type of digital asset and the number's growing. The number's growing. There's somewhere around 50, it's, it's estimated somewhere between 45 and 50 million Americans own Bitcoin. Uh, those voters, those 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 holders of digital assets, they're all voters. They're very active and they're they're very concerned uh, with the economic stability of America. They're they're all uh, proud to put forth their their thought process on how we can make this country better. And it's very important to make sure that they feel like you have their best interests at heart and nothing says you don't then nothing says you don't more than if you make statements about something that you really don't understand. So the most important part is to get educated. And it takes it takes some time. This is not this is not a simple read. Absolutely. When it comes to education, I, I have to say that one of the most valuable components uh, that I have in my life when it comes to Bitcoin was the three or four years that I took to learn about Bitcoin before I started to speak about Bitcoin. And I would encourage a lot of other folks to take as much time as possible to to learn about Bitcoin before they speak about it. Before we go, I got to ask you both one question and I'll get one, an answer. One thing, from, one thing. If, you have an ahead, M- if you have a PhD from MIT, you can spend 100 hours and then comment on Bitcoin. If you don't have a PhD from MIT, you need to spend a thousand hours on this industry and, and educate yourself for a lot longer than than guys like Michael Saylor take. And so that that that's it it really is about putting forth the effort to understand this technology. Is that the secret sailor getting a MIT PhD before learning about Bitcoin? Is that part of your journey to re- learning so rapidly about this technology? <laughs> we all know in the Bitcoin community the secret is doing the work. <laughs> someone needs to speak up, collect a few facts and explain to the world just how efficient Bitcoin mining is and why it's good for the world, why it's good for the environment. So I see um, each one of these opportunities is, is just another point where the world stops and they they get educated on Bitcoin. So I'm, I, I welcome the constructive engagement. Do hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel.